you use this kind of effect for targeting destination in the space technology. So when you reduce, when you take so many atoms out of your cylinder, you allow the very few uh, plasmas which are outside the tube to open up. And in opening up, uh, you allow the energy transfer across. In fact, if you, you I, I usually explain this kind of things, is like um, you have a solar system inside and uh, you create another vacuum solar system outside and the solar systems interact with each other and that's even how we see the color of the earth or the color of the uh, solar system it does not come so much as a production of the material this is coming up in the book number four i've explained it in a very detail even what they say what you see there as a blue color it's, uh, it's a wrong conception that we say the sky is blue because of the color of the water or the water is because of the color of the sky. The color of the earth or any other planet comes from the interaction of the uh, magnetic gravitational field of the internal matter, which is earth inside the pores, and gravitational magnetic field of the gases which are around it. You understand? Mm -hmm. So even the, the the strength of the shine of the let's say the star, it depends on the plasma strength on the top layer, which interacts with the gravitational magnetic field of the plasma internally. So it's exactly the same as when the light of the, the gravitational magnetic field of the Earth hits the gravitational magnetic field of the Sun. We have a daylight. That's that's the interaction. This is when you run your reactors in a space level, the gravitational magnetic field of your system with the Earth creates a light around your reactor, around your craft. This way you create it in reverse. By vacuuming, you take layers off, now the plasmas can interact. So in interacting, your plasma inside your tube opens up to uh, the, the external tube opens up, so it has a time to interact with what you have inside, and you see the change of the shape. In reality, it's still there, but now you allow different combination of interaction of the field of the few plasmas you leave inside. You see this if you change your gases or mixture of gases, then you see different colors, and that's why we see different planets in different colors different stars in different strength. We are showing physicality what we see in the universe now for the first time. We, under, we can explain it scientifically. Yes, that's right. We want to uh, experiment with some different gases, even with our crude setup here, just to see the different colors that uh, come out of it, so we have some understanding about that and, and how, how that works. It's a... Uh, uh, we realize that high voltage is not the way to go with your reactor, but at the same time, it's a, a good experience and a good education to play with it a little bit, just to see what happens with uh, with voltage in, in a vacuum chamber. And it's quite amazing. It's been an eye opener for me to to just be able to see that. This is what that guy shows, and everybody thinks is magic. But what it does, he. <laughs> We, we we could do the same thing in this chamber very easily. It's not it's not it's very interesting. If I show you something to do, <coughs> run your reactor again, run the same chamber again, uh -huh. and put some magnets around your chamber opposite well, each other. We already have a magnet underneath here. Uh, ring magnet is actually in the bottom of the the chamber. Yeah, put your, yeah, put your ring magnet on the side and you see the shape and how you can change gravitational field on it. Yeah. It'd be very interesting if you can see it. We experienced that like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we've had some uh, experience with that, with uh, putting magnets mm -hmm. on and changing magnets and so on. And I also have, uh, look at, whoops, I've got this arrangement here too, which is kind of handy, which is a, uh, 
It's a motor. It's a Subaru uh, blower motor from a car, a heater motor. But I've got six uh, neodymium magnets in a flywheel here in, uh, it's mounted onto it. And we can put that right on the top of the reactor and create magnetic fields in the reactor and actually have a magnetic drive on the other side of the uh, polycarbonate. To, the so I'm able to drive magnetically the, the uh, plasma ball, for example. So we, do, we are playing with uh, magnetic fields, and, but a lot of times I find that the magnetism isn't affecting the, the plasma really. Like when we take the plasma ball like this one, and we hold a magnet up to it, while my hand will make more of an influence, will have more of an effect on the plasma than a magnet will generally. And you show it, I'm going to explain to you why. Okay. Here's a, a big, big honking neodymium magnet here, for example. And when we put it up to here, it doesn't... Kill the light. Okay, the light. Put the finger next to it and see the difference between the two. Yeah, okay. And do the other one. This exactly shows what I was explaining to you. The, the solid magnet has a property of less, uh, much denser electrons, so you don't get it. Could you, could you explain that again in a different way, please? What, what do you mean? That now, has... when, when you have his finger on, there are a few different factors where you don't have with a solid magnet. First of all, the body is a current generator because you have a blood, which is a magnetic flow itself. And uh, the shape of the flow, if you look, is very much near to his heartbeat. If you see it? Well, it seems that way. Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, this, is the, this is the current flow of uh, one with another. You understand? So the shape is fixed, its pattern is fixed, because the body of a man is a lighter gas composition. But the, uh, the blood flow creates its own current, so it affects the shape of the plasma with the center. You use these kind of effects for targeting destination in the space technology. Ah. This so is a, these are applications. You see now, you have all those. When you put a finger, you collect them together, and the shape is fixed with a heartbeat. Or fixed with the heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I thought it was more of the convection currents going in there. But, yeah, but your, body, your body creates its own, but your tissue is softer. So your plasma is easier to create with it. Uh, your hard material, like the magnet, you see you concentrate everything in one position. You don't get any more than what's in there, but you bring it together. Where with the solid magnet, you don't have that property, because it's compact. It's the same as you create vacuum or lighter material. Right. The, uh, the non-vacuum condition is a metal, which is a heavy compact, there is not much room. When you put your softer material, which is your tissue, which is a combination of lighter elements, then you have a better, a better condition. Yeah, we talked about that earlier today, uh, he and I, I think, and I, I gave the example of the, the atoms like to have elbow room. They like to have <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the hydrogen atoms are there. Whoa, we got elbow room. This is great. And, and then you have a magnetic field as well, and they all line up, and they're real happy to let go of their electrons at that point. Yeah, but the, what, what is interesting, which sometimes I look at it, and I, I understand it, but it, in a way, to understand the reality behind it is different. You have this glass container which you're creating the original plasma in. Why does the change of the plasma outside it in your second chamber affects the pattern of the plasma inside that chamber? Exactly. So and there's times when we've gotten a really good flow going with it so that you could see the outer flow flowing around and swirling around the inner the inner globe and then the flow inside the globe is a separate 
magnetic field inside there, a whole separate field that was activated from the flow of the outside field. Yes, so this is in fact it shows fields in a plasma level uh, in so many ways have no boundaries. They don't understand the separation. That's right. Yes. Well that that's that's something that's something we learned too when our hose started lighting up that goes to the vacuum pump. Which hose? The, the vacuum pump hose. The vacuum pump hose. Um, we oh, had that. Yes. Be careful we what had... you do, what, what you do, this is what I usually do. Put a magnet ring on that pipe. Build a unit that you cross your magnet to your pipe through it. Right. And that and will take out the plasma, uh, the harmful plasma, is that correct? Yes, but the thing is, it can, with that, that um, flow can go in the motor and burn your motor out. I wondered about that because uh, it didn't look like a good thing to have a two feet of green hose happening. You don't see, you don't see the whole pipe lining up, and the length of it does. That's right, a couple of feet, and if you were to touch it, it would light it up stronger, it makes it brighter. It's the same as your finger you just showed. The best yeah. thing to do on that pipe, somewhere on that pipe, closer to, close to your reactor or away from it, you use um, a very strong magnet mm -hmm. that you pass the pipe through, the, a ring magnet. I see. That's around the pipe, magnet. yeah. You can't find yeah. it. it <coughs> we did try putting a magnet up close to the pipe, like squishing it a little bit with the magnet, and it seemed to sort of amplify it a little bit even. You have to use a ring magnet. Right. If you can find a ring magnet, are you using a four or six millimeter pipe? It looks like a six millimeter pipe. This would be a six millimeter, yeah. yeah. Use a six millimeter ring that it actually, you pull it through it very strong, that there's a contact, contact all the time. So you stop the flow of a magnet, but sometimes if it's too strong, it still jumps. Mm -hmm. But you you freeze it. It's a specific way to do it. So is it a good idea to have another con compartment? No, um, it's I'll just a ring. Just put it through it. Right. Well, you did mention the idea of another uh, chamber to be like a dump chamber, the to to let the no, plasma yeah, settle down in. I do it. This is the. You see what happened. <coughs> In the vacuum, <coughs> when you go for actual testing and you put gasoline, if you release the energy which is in there into your pump, you burn your pump out. Yeah? You, you are not working with a real vacuum plasma condition. When you work with a real plasma condition and you're in a dynamic, you open uh, the, what you call the transition levels. You never get to the principal level. You open the higher order of transition level. By the time the, the, the transition level comes to find its um, new parameter, it releases a lot of energy, a lot of magnetic field beyond it to find its balance. And then this surplus magnetic field, the gravitational field, when you suck it out, it goes into your pump, and you find all the plastics in your pump become uh, like the chewing gum. Oh yeah. Now would it's, that would that go for our kind of pump that we have here, which is your standard yeah, yeah. sort of refrigeration yeah, unit? That. This is what yeah. we have to operate with. I use that. I use the same kind of pumps, but the best thing is to collect this pipe into a five liter cylinder. Probably not a stainless steel, but a steel container, a cylinder, yeah? As opposed to, um, uh, we have a, I've got an aluminum, uh, uh, what do you call it, a pressure cooker I picked up here. I was yeah. hoping to modify that to use that. You buy this about $50, $60, these cylinders. Mine was yeah. five bucks at the Salvation Army. <laughs>